Very good morning to all of you. And welcome to the Novena. Our opening hymn is on page 12. One, two, come Holy Ghost. Come Holy Ghost, Creator blessed, and in our hearts become Thy rest. Come with Thy grace and heavenly aid to fill the heart which Thou hast made. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we are grateful to God for the many blessings we receive from him to the prayers of our mother of perpetual help. Let us once more ask her to pray with us and for us. On page 31, 31, petition set 6, that they, they may not give in to peer pressure or mix with the wrong company in schools and neighbourhoods. That those who are addicted to pornography or hooked on electric games will be set free. Amen. That we will make use of social media in a responsible and constructive manner. Amen. That we will be filled with Christian charity to serve the less fortunate and the abandoned. Amen. That they may find strength and patience in caring for the aged parents and family members. They will have the courage and support to raise their children in the values of the gospel. That we may be more conscious in promoting peace and harmony in our country and in the world. That we always create a safe environment for all members in our church and society. That we do our part in keeping our public places clean and beautiful for everyone to enjoy. That those who are separated, divorced, or widowed may find hope and strength to move on with their lives. Amen. That those in broken relationships will, will not harbor hatred and bitterness in their hearts. Amen. That the broken hearted will continue to walk in faith and experience God's love and mercy for them. Amen. For those who have been released from prison and drug centers to receive and the necessary support and care from their family, the church, and society. Amen. And on page 33, for the season of Lent, that when we have the discipline to practice self-denial, penance, and reconciliation during Lent, Amen. that we support and welcome into our community those preparing for baptism. Amen. And let us now pray for our own intentions. Let us pray. <coughs> Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear our petitions and grant them to the prayers of Mary, our mother. Amen. In the past week, we received a total of 731 letters. Of these, 381 petitions, 177 thanksgiving, and 173 private. And here are a sample of the petitions. Dearest Mother Mary, I am lonely and heartbroken as the man I love is unable to make a commitment. Please help us. Dear Mother Mary, I will be going a, for a surgery next week. Please pray for me. 
Dear Mother of Perpetual Health, my husband used to be a cheerful and patient person, but of late, he has become moody. Protect him and make him better. Dear Mother Mary, my daughter is 15 and my son is 10. Please guide them and help them to grow in faith. Dear Mother Mary, I pray and hope that my mental illness will be cured. Dear Mother of Perpetual Health, I am a widow and struggling with my finances to look after my three children. Mother, please help me. Dear Mother Mary, I am feeling stressed and anxious even before I start my six-month internship. Please help me to be strong and let my bosses and colleagues be good and nice. Dear Mother Mary, I pray that I will be able to conceive and bear a child soon, despite my age and medical issues. Let us listen to some of the Thanksgiving letters that are also sent in. Dear Mother of Papa Jehov, I'm writing this Thanksgiving letter to say a big thank you for your prayers and intercession for my daughter GCA A-level results. Despite the many tears shed after a number of exams, she managed to score all A's and B's. And I'm really thankful for your prayer and intercession during the preparation period and during the exam itself for the good results. No amount of thank yous can express my deepest gratitude for your prayer and intercession. Thank you, Mother, for your help. Dear Mother, thank you for the many blessings you shower on me, on my family. 2016-2017 has been a really tough patch for me in my real estate career, and it took my focus away. However, through your constant intercession, I finally made a big break through this month, which compensated for the last two years. My family and I are very grateful to you and the Lord. Thank you very much, your loving child. Dear Mother Mary, you know I carry the rosary in my pocket and recite it every day without fail. However, seven days ago, I lost the rosary. I pray to you for help to find it. Yesterday, at the lift lobby of my office, something made me turn my head, and there I found my rosary hanging inside the security notice board. For so many years, I have never once looked at it. And thank you, Mother, for helping me to re discover and find my precious rosary, your loving Catholic son. Dear Mother of Papa Chihau, I came through your shrine some time ago to pray for my mother who was diagnosed with stage two colon cancer. I fervently put my mother into your hands. Thank you for indicating for me. My prayers were answered. My mother's surgery went smoothly and she's now totally clear of cancer without even the need of any treatment. Thank you, Mother, and thank you to our Lord Jesus from the bottom of my heart, your grateful daughter. We take in one more letter. Dear Madam or Papa to help, thank you so much for praying for me. Yesterday was a stressful day with free presentation to make, but with your prayer, I survived pretty okay. Thank you so much for coming to my aid just and when I needed it most, and I learned so much just by praying to you, believing that Jesus will send his Holy Spirit to guide me every step of the way. It's only with God's great saving grace and help that I was able to pull through. Thank you, Mother, and I love you, your loving daughter. So let us continue with our prayer of confidence on page 34. Mother of Perpetual Help. The Magnificat, let us pray, let us share our with Mary her prayer of praise and thanksgiving to God. My soul glorifies the Lord. Spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. He looks at his servant in a likeness. Henceforth, all just become a blessing. Though my key was marvelous for me, holy is his name. 
his mercy from age eight on those who fear him. Puts off his man from the road. Mary, you're the mother of Christ. Uh, let us pray. Heavenly Father, Our hymn to Mother Mary is on page 62, 62. On this day, O beautiful Mother, one verse and chorus pleased. I have a long list of announcements to make, eight in total, in fact, uh, longer than my sermon. <laughs> but I think earlier it was shown on the uh, screen, all right? So I will just highlight them to you, and uh, the details you can get ID on the uh, church bulletin and uh, later in the office. Session of the Cross will be held every Friday at 6 p.m. followed by the 6.30 p.m. Mass. Chinese Lantern Rally will be held on the 7, 14, 21st of March at 7.45 p.m. with Station of the Cross followed by Mass at 8.15. Uh, scrutiny, the preparation of the uh, baptism for the elect will be held on the 4th, that is this coming Sunday, and the 11th. Uh, this will be in preparation for those people preparing for their baptism. The Mass will be at 8 a.m. Please keep the elect in your prayers to receive the sacrament of baptism, confirmation, and their first Eucharist. The new RCIA will begin on the 3rd of July and will last until the 31st of May 2019. Adults 18 and above are invited if you are interested please obtain your application form from the office. The closing date is on the 31st of May. Now, please take note that the Tagalog Mass will be held on the 11th of March at 12 noon. Volunteers, staff, beneficiaries from Boys Town will be here to raise funds for their programs, services, and maintenance of Boys Town facilities. We ask you to give them your generous support. And the last one is on the City District Penitent Service will be held at 8 p.m. I will highlight just one, which is our church here, Novena Church. It will be on the 15th Thursday, all right? The rest you can find in the church bulletin. All of them are held at 8 p.m., okay? Starting from the 12th of March until the 21st of March. My dear friends, welcome once again to our Lenten Novena. The theme this year is Jesus gave eternal life. We are more or less halfway. 
And our theme this morning is Jesus walking on the water. To better understand and make a reflection, allow me to highlight to you some of the elements of this particular gospel story that come to us from the Gospel of St. John. The element number one is this. It is evening. There's a strong wind and the sea is rough. The second element, the boat in which the apostles were in is about three or four miles away from shore. And then element number three, Jesus walked towards the boat. Now, bearing in mind it's evening, it's dark, there's no light. So when Jesus started to walk towards the boat, the disciples were afraid. They thought it was a ghost. Jesus said, do not be afraid. It is I. There's element number four. And element number five, Jesus got into the boat. And before they know it, the boat was very near shore, as if by magic. Now, these are the elements of this particular gospel story of Jesus walking on the water. Now, what lessons can we learn from this? It is evening. It is dark. And the sea is rough and a strong wind. I particularly choose the letters earlier, the petition letter and the thanksgiving letter to highlight these elements and to make the connection. They are dark times in our lives. The people who wrote in about someone suffering from cancer, someone going to give a presentation and feeling stressed, someone about to begin internship and feeling very anxious, someone asking for help to bring up the children because of financial difficulties and so forth. So in this kind of circumstances, our lives is dark. We are facing the storms of life. And the, the, our life is very rough. We are being tossed back and forth. All right? We are a bit anxious and afraid. The boat is three or four miles away from shore. In other words, they are not near land. They are on the boat, and the boat is being tossed up and down. So they are afraid for their safety. So when we are undergoing this kind of uh, stress and facing problem in our lives, we do not feel safe, right? We are not on solid ground. We are struggling. We are hoping to get to a safe place where I don't have to be so stressed. So it's as if we're, we are not yet on shore. And we pray. We come to the novena. We pray, for example. And Jesus come into our lives. But sometimes when God come into our lives, we are also afraid because we don't know what's going to happen. Will he answer my prayer? Will my problem be solved? Or maybe Jesus invites us to do something that is very challenging. And we are not sure we are ready to do that. So sometimes, even when God comes into our lives, we also can be afraid. I often say to people, may the Holy Spirit disturb you. Because when the Holy Spirit comes into your life, the Holy Spirit actually disturbs us to make us change our way of doing things. Because maybe we make not very clever choices in our lives. And that's why we are in trouble. So now the Holy Spirit come and say, no, you got to do it differently. So in that sense, the Holy Spirit disturbed us. And that's not very comfortable, is it now? Because I need to change. And I'm not ready or I'm not sure if I can change. And finally, when we surrender to the Holy Spirit, as it were, Jesus enter our boat. And before you know it, we are okay. Like some of the letters, the Thanksgiving letter, this lady said, you know, during my presentation, the Holy Spirit came at the right time, the right place. And I did okay. And before I know it, it's okay. I finished already. And I'm so proud of myself. All right? So sometimes we need to put our trust in God and let go. And let God be God. Sometimes we fight for control, you see, because I feel anxious. And the problem is, the harder I fight, 
for control, the less God can do. If you want God to lead you, you got to let go. You got to let God lead. Otherwise, I'm leading, not God. All right? And it's very scary to do that, nah? to let go. What if I fall? And this is very, very challenging. But unless we let go, God can't do anything. All right? You take a good look at the icon of our marble of joy help. All of you are very familiar with this icon, right? Take a look at Jesus. What is he doing? He's hanging to Mother Mary's hand. Right? And where is he looking? The two angels. One side is a lance and the sponge. On the other side is the crucifix. Jesus is also scared. So he holds on to mother's many hand, looking at the two instruments of the passion. And what is Mother Mary doing? She's looking at us. She's not looking at Jesus, you know. She's looking at us, right? Now, all of us who come to the novena, we need to hang on to Mother Mary's hand also. Because we are also frightened. Karagana. We are also panicking because there are many problems in our lives. So Mother Mary is saying to us, don't worry, my children, I'm here for you. Just as I'm here for my son. Now Jesus in the icon is a young child, not an adult yet. Not the one who entered the boat. Huh? That one is an adult Jesus. This one is a, a very young Jesus. So Mother Mary in her lifetime as mother of Jesus also gave Jesus comfort, consolation, and confidence. So those of us who come to the novena is like Jesus hanging on to their life, to Mother Mary's hand. So Mother Mary said to us, don't worry, my children, I'm here for you. So this should give us a lot of comfort, give us a lot of confidence. Now, when we come to the novena to pray, we don't pray alone, you know. Literally, there's a, at least a thousand people here. Correct or not? And many people put their letters in the petition uh, shrine also. So when we pray, we pray not only for myself, we pray for everybody. We pray for each other. So collectively, and Mother Mary is also praying with and for us. So that should give us plenty of confidence and comfort. Let God be God. Jesus walks on the water. What else can he not do? We can't walk on the water. Huh? We sing. Huh? I'll, I'll, I'll probably drown if I do that. <laughs> okay? I'm a lousy swimmer. All right? But Jesus can walk on the water. So what else can he not do? So with this confidence, let us continue then with our prayer of the Mamariah on page 36. Remember, most greater virgin Mary. We now pray for the sake, especially remember those who have asked for our prayers. Lord Jesus Christ, you bear our suffering. We now pray for the Holy Father's intentions. Our Father, who art in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. And for him thy eyes are pleading, verses 3 and 4 on page 38.
You have your memory from heaven. Let us pray, O oh God, in this wonderful sacrament, you have left us a moment of your passion. We ask you, deliver us also to worship the sacred mystery of your body and blood. They be constantly feel in our lives the effects of the redemption. You who live and reign forever and ever. Our final hymn is on page 61, 61. O Purest of Creatures, one verse and chorus, please. Good morning. God bless you. Have a good weekend.